So, my name is Pavel. I work on the altimeter. If you don't know what we're doing or would like to go into details, so you can come up to our stage. We're doing monitoring that is able, the way Postgres works, is able to show in detail everything that works fine. So, we just are thinking a lot about this. We do a lot. That is why I decided to share the way we use a well known methodology of muffle monitoring, like use red. The way we uh, uh, present the statistic Postgres operations. First of all, we have the situation that you probably faced, either you or DBA a developer comes to up you, or if even you are a developer and you have some problems with the predict productivity of the database and you think that database works poorly, but in reality, <coughs> The problem is not just in this software database, but in the way it is used in this specific moment. It may be incorrect value for uh, an optimized using or some performance problem is generated just because you use the database incorrectly, just simply because you don't know what is going on with it in this current moment. And that is why we need to find a way how to look inside. But Everything is not that simple. Postgres has a lot of code, a lot of subsystems, and if you have experience, you know a lot about many units, as well as the productivity and performance of different servers. You know what, where to look into, what to optimize, but this ad hoc experience may work in specific situation or it may not work. That is why we need a system how to get through if you don't have any of your own ideas. There is use methodology. It just says that all system chunks can be reviewed and considered as the resource. These resources could be monitored in three aspects. The way it is utilized, saturation and errors. But why do we need methodology if we have all these viewers? PG, start, activity. Why do we need to come to methodology? Simply because it enables us to relay the knowledge. For example, you got to know something in one of the system, you cover it with monitoring, you take the ready-made monitoring. And respectively, you want to tell this to your colleagues. You can actually tell it in a situation based, or you can actually use a specific model where you input specific aspects, and then it will be much easier to hand over the knowledge. Utilization. Whenever we're talking about utilization, we're talking about CPU usage, LSTAT, using the network. We have the utilization parameter that is collected by operation system. It looks like everything is very simple. We see that the utilization is high, then it's not good. But just imagine, this is the database uh, server and uh, Postgres service, and you're trying to look what is wrong there. You are trying to use all your go-to measures, and you cannot find, you see that you cannot single out any process that it provided us with this picture. You just looked and there is nothing suspicious and you need to plunge into the details. How can you actually apply the framework utilization to anything like this? We start from the closing backend. These are the processes created by Postgres in order to process the queries and backhand system. Utilization, so resources can be split into two parts in a way. First of all, this is the conditional division. So these are the time. It's like the CPU time, disk time. You shall actually measure the percentage of um, active work. What is active work? Because, for example, we are talking about spin log, bin log, backend is work, so probably it's not an active or useful. But still, we actually have the high use of processor. Another processor type is the spacer resources. 
these are the resources uh, like uh, memory, free disk space, some slots with, uh, with the limitation count. For example, process may borrow some resources and may not return it. Why do we need utilization? So there's a sample. These two resources type have capacity. If, for example, we take 100%, that means that we cannot proceed with operation. Then it means that we're going to have a problem. If the new job arrives, it may not be executed. And this job either gets queued, and then we see that this system halts and freezes, or we actually get an error, and the system is not ready to take this uh, job in process and we have two metrics we measure capacity what happens when we actually have full capacity first of all everything is queued and then we need saturation that will actually measure the size of the queue and if it is not able to queue then it throws an error let's look at back end of progress you can actually look in pg start activity there is a picture in some slice of time we can see the chain so during the night time we have large peak and high utilization out of 300 connections we have very few free but it doesn't say that the system is fully busy we can have a picture that it is not really stable but quite efficient now we can see that the utilization is constantly high we are not able to make a percentage out of it, but we know that the utilization is high. And if the system receives additional tasks it needs to execute, then we may lack capacity for this specific pool, uh, for the backend collect, uh, backend pool, limited by the Postgres. But if you look in this case, in more detail, if we get the connection state, it fi we find out that the prevailing part of all these used connections of backends is in idle state. So nothing is going on there. We we'll get some idling transactions, transaction is open, but there are no queries. And we have a s few active con connections that execute something. So the question is, utilization is not alone but here we have three utilizations we were looking at one but in reality we actually cannot describe the full picture these three utilizations match three different resources although we consider it as a one single resource this is the pool connection pools. In reality, we have three resources, pool connections, connections pool, transactions, and open transactions. This is the transactions volume that can be opened at the same time. At third ones, the current active transactions. We're going to have some transactions with the more detailed resources, some specific blocks of tables, but now let's come back to the previous example where we thought that everything is better than Tom. So the useful work is done by connections, you know, by these active connections. 5% for all connections. But the utilization is 95%. So here the situation is as follows. We think that the current situation is better, but let's go inside and see. But here we see that the useful job is conduct. Well, so that the connections execute a lot of useful work. We actually consider the high utilization. What is high utilization? This 100 connection is like max connection values. It's a rough estimate setting value that we and default set for this database. It may be uh, twice as much, twice as little. And at the same time, we get the utilization, either small or 100%. So, and this is this pool is an artificial limitation. Somewhere we can manage this limitation. It all depends what type of system we can manage. Somewhere we can limit this limitation, and somewhere we cannot limit or manage the connection. 
why do we need saturation or what do we need the saturation for because when we look at the high utilization we get the picture but saturation is introduced when the utilization is 100 percent and actually the jobs are cute why do we need to measure it because it's clear that the job is cute as the utilization close to 100 percent thus setting the job to Q. You look at top, you just launched something on your machine and you see that the CPU usage is low, but load average is high. This is a typical situation when utilization is not 100%, but saturation is high. Load average is the saturation method. In a way, it just manages all runnable processes. The processes that are ready to be executed on the process, but the processor, but the processor is uh, CPU is busy, and thus the jobs are queued in planner. But the CPU usage is low. For example, we can have several processes that wake up and want to be executed at the same time, and that is why we have a high load average value. It's like from lines it just shows you some information back but if you just look at the top once a second then within this second the CPU could actually be idle for the major part of time but the process is either and waiting and from the responsive responsiveness point of view we actually lose the productivity and performance for example, yet another example, here we have some peaks for idle transactions. That means that we have uh, some moments in time when we get a lot of transactions opened up. This was the example of the way saturation transfers into errors. Here we have idle applied, we have max connections, so that we can see, and it looks like we do not have any problems here. We have a hall here to the right, but in reality, I actually hear a little bit as in select SPG set activity. I didn't take the connections with the true connectors. Actually, you know, they execute some connectors, some reviews, and they expect something. And here, the situation, it's different if we just display all this information. So now, utilization of the connection pool reaches 100%. And after this, monitoring stops working just simply because the database is not able to get anything. What is waiting? So, the high utilization of the resource, it means that the situation happened inside within the portrait state. It just actually structs in the limit. And it's easier. In this case, it's like locked. One connection. When one query is expecting for the vacancy slot to appear, and connections backend count increase, and thus we get a suspect. In reality, locks in this moment, it was utilized completely. And on the one hand, log is, well, space resource where you need to measure the utilization, whether it's free or whether it's busy. On the other hand, we need to look at the time this slot is busy. And the connection is locking for the lot is the saturation matter for a specific lot. But this backends they are before the process Postgres creates the backend process, the it shall receive a connection from the client. So the client in, initiates TCP connection, Postmaster accepts the TCP connection and only then creates backend or decides not to create a backhand. We don't create backhands, we send everyone to just say and reset. And they just go to time wait. So you can see there. 
Why is it important? Because we're just thinking, okay, connection is limited with these parameters, but connections are also limited by multiple factors. This is the pulse master. And I'll explain you some other differences of connections pulled. On the one hand, it's slot-based, but on the other hand, it's time-based. Here we see that we had a lot of active clients, but this situation is principal difference. We're talking, we're talking about the drop, about the gap, but here the connection limit is 5,000. It's just because we have a lot of Postgres backends configured. So in reality, we had all the connections dropped and then customers would just recover them again. TCP looks like this. They're all finalized. They all went to time wait. And then the customers who want to do something in progress, they open up these connections. But let's just check what happens in operation system when they get the uh, connect. Connects are presented to deadlock or just listen sockets. When we did the search, the backlog of the socket is occupied 100%. It has limited size. It's also a resource. And in order, well, and for these resources, this is the indication that somebody is, that something is queued. This is the situation matrix. But here we have the backend method utilization. And of course, those who were not that lucky to get into this deadlock, the system just sends reset comment. And on the level of the customer, it's like an error. The customer is trying to connect to Postgres, but he gets an sorry of the TCP. But why should we use red if we have to use command? You may be server administrator, administrator, um, administrator, or you may be developer, you may be somewhere in the middle. Everything was fine in order to assess the productivity. If you can't change something with database. But usually, you use a database that actually is submitted by another uh, division, and you have a question. You are worried only how fast Postgres replies to all your matters. Then, you need to go to a red methodology. You also just need to monitor the number of requests, the number of queries, the number of errors, we can compare the number of the overall uh, with overall data and we just check the time when this request was generated let's see check the example for the postgres postgres query may be transactions we just get the arriving transaction incoming and going transaction and it's quite stable by the end of the day everything is pretty much simple we don't get this many uh, transactions anymore if we look at rollback so this is the business mistake it's like the peak we have here at six o'clock it becomes more easy to understand as we uh, what actually uh, use this type of storage then we do the search for these transactions and pick when we actually was generated by a number of customers now a few words about rollbacks and exceeded limit connection and we need to understand that in this red we have two errors we have custom client errors and we have the survey errors and I'm saying that you can monitor only one of the error ties. You can monitor only one side and can, you can forget about the other one. And you'll be thinking that everything is covered, see all the errors, but you don't see the server ones because you have an inbuilt failover mechanism and read rise. So this really affects the performance of the system, but you just miss them. Let's check on the queries within the transaction. It's like a stable picture. The uh, day under it starts going on, building up. By the night time, it just drops. But if you look at the incoming connections and incoming requests, in uh, depending on the queries, then we can get a more detailed picture. But in this case, everything looks like stable. And it's like a specific select we just get a situation but in general it's just going the way it goes it's
Например, была... Here the picture is quite different. Before it was stable, stable load with some spikes, but now we have new queries coming in. And I would like you to notice that we didn't have these queries before. So they were from time to time, but now they are constant and they are causing load. And it's very important to know because you see your database is lagging, but this is just because of new queries coming in. This is a complementary graph about request errors duration. So out of PG statements we can see the time required for the database to process a statement. So this quite a lot of noise, but you see some correlation at a particular point of time the uh, query time went down which is weird because the query time is a very stupid metric so we we've got a lot of queries some of them can be executed faster than the previous ones and the average uh, went down also sometimes we can monitor slow log, but it's not enough for duration statements because it will show you spikes, what exact queries are lagging your database, but it won't show you that the database is slowing down because of walls. Also, I have a couple of exam examples about extremes. So we see something going, something goes on, then we have a spike, then it's okay, then another spike, but as you can see, the request errors durations uh, were reduced almost to nothing. So most probably it's a problem, but it's not a problem that everything is requesting slower. Another example about uh, stable performance, so as we... Um, if we take a look at average query time, we can say that uh, something very strange, a growth when, when a spike. But if we take a look at particular queries, uh, it's becoming clearer. You know what exact queries started to generate it. Maybe they have different parameters. Or planner just changed its mind. So it gives you some picture to understand. Uh, so that's it. I have run out of time. Use use and red to for your ad hoc monitoring for ad hoc performance tools to introduce into the system just to understand what is going on and maybe you will find things that were invisible to you before that. Thank you. Okay, we can start a QA session. So, should you have any questions, you can ask them now or at the company's booth. Okay, one question over there. Are there any ready-to-use solutions for Postgres that utilizes, that leverages use and red? Well, I have to do it manually. Okay, Meta is the is one of the tools. I wouldn't say that you need to have uh, specifically for this methodology. The problem is somebody called it um, a, an assessment, a measurement uh, method, and let's apply it. It's applied everywhere. But the pro the point is that when you monitor a system and you're operating as this system use and red are very useful because they allow you to understand what you are missing for example you are monitoring uh, some resources uh, you see saturation maybe utilization is not high but saturation is there and you don't know about it and the performance problem is in that and this methodology is not just to improve by use of red is just for you to understand that you have missed something there are no systems that uh, have full coverage because it's always about finding a compromise between huge amount of data and detailization they are providing to you
Hello and thank you for your talk. Would like to know your opinion about uh, four gold signals. Uh, four gold signals is like a semi union of use in red. It says that you have to monitor this stuff, so it's like use plus durations because we have errors. But red says that we need to monitor requests, not only durations. So in to some extent they're less than using red altogether they do not show you some aspects they will show you that the low profile has changed because you can't monitor the number of queries coming in so can we monitor traffic yes but what resource are we talking about because traffic is a network resource and database can be uh, requested by transactions or maybe we are talking about specific logs on requests okay got it thank you uh, thank you for your talk um, I have a practical question so methodology is always up to us, but we always are looking forward to fixing some problems to make our customers happy. What methodology allows to identify these errors faster? Maybe we can fix them easier. So what is more profitable? So the question is not very accurate. It depends on what you can change, what you can control, if you are owning this part that can be viewed as resources, then you would probably utilize use. If you are owning queries going to a system, for example, you are a developer and you are writing selects, loading your database, and database uh, utilization is um, handled by your customer then you have to handle this request and you have to monitor them and so you can monitor their durations or errors in that case you have to use red if I got you correctly of course What if we can control re both resources and requests? In that case, you have to use both methodologies. As far as requests are concerned, you can uh, clearly see what parts are slowing down your database. For example, your database is takes it takes too much time for database to uh, handle this request and then you can analyze them in terms of resources utilization so here we can see a specific update two updates um, that are loading the system but there are some situations where you can't say what exactly slows down your system so it's like uh, it's like a resource equal to all queries and uh, this is the uh, this is the bottom line of this problem and these situations are different because the resource is not query dependent it's like a common resource for all of them and you have to analyze all your resources and uh, understand what actually breaks your system because this beautiful Postgres is all about hardware resources so you have to understand what hardware resources are under attack and then fix the problem any more questions? Uh, 
Uh, thank you for your presentation. Looks like you are collecting a lot of data on Postgres instance. On a particular note, what do you do with the fact that it actually brings some resources, uh, extra resources utilization? We use two ways in order to do so. First, we say that we know about it and we and we always warn you we always say if you are not ready for extra load if you are ready to work blind blindly and if you are not ready to use extra server resources we always warn it but it's always up to you and the second way we are optimizing uh, uh, the way we do but okay meta so there are a lot of views. We are requesting these views, but no, not very frequently, just once per, per, per minute. So it's not real time. Well, real time is a very tricky question that we need to discuss separately. But the load is limited only by a number of requests. Uh, it's just uh, dozens of them, and they're not very heavy. And if we have it uh, more than one per minute, the load is not that heavy compared to queries going to a database. You, you remember how many requests were going to the database, uh, around 2000. So even if we uh, call it uh, one per second or one per minute, it's just a fraction of it. Okay, got it, thank you. Okay, we've got a coffee break. According to our agenda, let's say thank you to Pavel and let's have a break.